Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a sci-fi, drama film from 2021, titled Finch. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Ten years have passed since a solar flare destroyed the ozone layer, and caused temperatures to rise to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, or 70 degrees Celsius. Planet Earth became a largely uninhabitable wasteland, scorched by ultraviolet radiation and subject to extreme weather events. One of the few survivors, Finch, is a robotic engineer equipped with a heat and ultraviolet resistant suit. He's out scouting for supplies with his helper robot, Dewey, getting whatever is left for him and his only friend at home. Once the area has been scouted and cleared, he marks it to track the progress of things around him. He drives through the deserted city. Most of it he has already cleared. His suit gives off a warning signal, a storm is coming. He turns the truck around and floors the gas pedal, the storm is bad news. Finch manages to drive to his laboratory that was once owned by the company he worked for before the disaster. He enters the underground facility. Cleans his suit and Dewey with air pressure. Finch is dying. In his comfortable home, his friend Wilson is waiting for him. I mean his dog, Goodyear. He snuggles with his dog, he really loves him. Finch prepares Goodyear a nice meal he found for him, and pours himself a drink. Goodyear waits patiently for Finch to get himself a plate, but today he's fasting. Their dwindling supplies are a problem. He puts on Papa Loves Mambo, grabs books on how to care for a dog or do everyday mundane tasks, and after the AI opens them up, scans and uploads all the information they contain onto Finch's new project. In the meantime, Dewey takes care of his little whims and needs. Finch is working on developing a more advanced humanoid robotic companion to take care of his dog once he passes away. Goodyear's well-being is the last thing he cares about. Finch has been doing a great deal of research about radiation exposure and UV rays. He takes out Dewey's eyes, making Dewey sad. He turns on his humanoid robot and begins transferring data to it. Finch tries to start a conversation, but the robot doesn't respond. After a disappointed sigh, the robot finally starts nodding its head, signaling that it understands Finch. He is delighted that he has finally managed to get one step further and that Goodyear may soon have a new friend. With a little more tweaking, he asks the robot to say something, and it says something. Finch then asks the robot to say something about itself. It has four guidelines, such as not harming humans, but the most important rule that overrides all other rules is that in Finch's absence, he must protect the dog at all cost. That's how important Goodyear is to Finch. Suddenly, the power goes out. Finch gets out and fixes the wind turbine. The power comes back on. The robot tries to talk to Goodyear, but he just relieves himself on its soon-to-be extremities. The robot later chooses the name Jeff. Meanwhile, outside, Finch notices that the wind is picking up and another huge storm is coming. He returns and hooks Jeff up to the weather station to make a weather forecast. Jeff says that in the next 24 hours, four different storms will converge on their exact location, with a slight probability of creating a superstorm. Jeff predicts it will last about 40 days. Finch eats his long-saved sweet peaches and gets to work on Jeff. He plans to get out of St. Louis, their best bet is San Francisco, Doggo agrees. With time running out, Finch ups Jeff's transfer rate, they need to get out before the storm hits. He teaches him to walk on the spot, to walk forward and turn around. Jeff understands and manages to walk himself. However, Goodyear doesn't trust the robot. Because of the hasty departure, only 72% of the data could be uploaded to Jeff, making him have the mental capacity of a child. Finch packs all the supplies, like food, coffee, and water. Jeff is getting better at walking, he's even able to run. Finch calls for Dewey, but has forgotten that he took out his eyes. He replaces them with a camera that was in the lab. Finch, Goodyear, Jeff, and Dewey make their way to San Francisco in an RV. The beginning of the drive was not what you would call smooth for Jeff. During the drive, Jeff keeps telling random facts, like St. Louis has over 600,000 residents, even though the city is obviously deserted. They manage to escape the storm for now. They make a stop in a town and Finch gives Jeff a few lessons. Number one, check the padlocks on the buildings, because if they are still intact, that means what was inside is still inside. Lesson number two, the ozone layer is Swiss cheese. He goes on talking about the solar flare, but Jeff is still looking for the cheese. As Finch struggles to open a door, Jeff just takes it out. Inside, Jeff sees himself in the mirror for the first time. Finch finds some popcorn, walks out with Jeff, and they pop it. Jeff is excited, but the excitement quickly ends when they realize the storm is close to them. They try to outrun it, but it catches up to them. Finch and Jeff head outside. He shows Jeff how to put spikes around the RV and connect them with a wire and tells him no slacking. Goodyear is concerned. 
Finch is tired, so Jeff takes charge. Finch secures the RV from the inside, hides Goodyear and looks outside. A huge tornado is getting closer, Jeff goes inside and holds on. As the storm envelops them, the wires begin to snap until their RV is hanging by a single thread. The storm passes as quickly as it began, everyone is fine. Finch tells Jeff he did a good job, but unfortunately their tire is shredded, they have a spare, but no Jack. No problem, they have Jeff. In the morning, Jeff tries to speak in dog language, but it only irritates Goodyear and Finch. He points out that there is no such thing as dog talk and that Goodyear will trust him in time. San Francisco 1522 miles. Jeff's inquisitive behavior both amuses and frustrates Finch. When Jeff inquires about the concept of trust, Finch is not sure how to describe it, so he tells him a story from his life. How he hated his team working with him in robotics, but when it came down to it, he always had his team's back and that's trust. When Jeff tells him he had a hard time following the story, Finch's condition starts to deteriorate. He drives to a restaurant, leaves Goodyear in Jeff's care and goes inside, realizing he doesn't have much time left. Jeff has issues with Goodyear and is sad that Doggy will not listen to him. While Finch and Goodyear play house in a restaurant, Jeff plays with the RV, putting on songs and pretending to drive. With his fooling around he lowered the handbrake and the car started rolling. When Finch confronts him, he plays the I do not know how it happened robot and when he asks him to bring him the suit, he gives him the thumbs up and drives backwards instead, ramming the RV. He comes out and tells Finch he's an excellent driver. Finch shows him what happens when he comes in direct contact with sunlight. He yells at Jeff and tells him he has only one job, to take care of Goodyear, he needs to grow up. As they continue the drive, Jeff mopes in the back. To cheer him up, Finch teaches him to drive and Dewey stiffens up. After a minor hiccup in oversteering, Jeff calls himself an excellent driver once again. Goodyear does not agree, but Finch is glad Jeff is learning. They camp at night and see the northern lights thanks to the fried ozone layer. Jeff wonders, if daylight is so dangerous, why don't they drive at night? Because the dust, smoke, heat and UV rays are predictable. Nighttime brings out what is not predictable, people. People who are starving cannot be trusted. In the morning, Finch is shivering and Jeff takes care of him with Goodyear's permission. They continue on their way. They arrive in a large city, Finch is resting, so Jeff calls Dewey and they go in search of supplies. They enter a hospital that has obviously been looted, but Jeff has yet to learn that. Finch wakes up to find that his companion is missing. He realizes they are in town and knows it's bad news, he has trouble gearing up. Jeff leaves Dewey to guard the fort and goes upstairs where he finds medicine, food, and even a jacket for himself. Finch gets dressed and goes after Jeff and Dewey. Dewey has found some snacks, but doesn't realize there is a bear trap. Someone is watching Finch from the shadows. Jeff finds a cupboard, opens it and it's filled with food, which he excitedly grabs. Dewey gets ripped in half by the trap. Finch hears this and finds him. He unpowers Dewey and apologizes to him. He then hears the rumble Jeff makes and finds him as well. Jeff tells him that he found something to eat with his initiative, but because he lacks common sense, he failed to see anything wrong with the place. There are people, they start running, with Finch barely managing to stay on his feet due to his condition. They run to the RV and take off right away, a car starts up behind them. Finch hands the wheel to Jeff and tells him it was a trap and he walked right into it, Dewey is gone. He grabs a gun and tells Jeff that there will be no more mistakes from now on. In a sad voice, Jeff asks, what would you like me to do? He just answers, drive, and passes out. When Finch regains consciousness, Jeff drives in silence, very unusual for him. He also notices the car following them. They turn off the headlights, as Jeff can see in the dark. Finch, being extremely concerned, gets Jeff to floor the gas. They are driving right into a storm. Finch grabs the wheel and turns the RV off the road, he wants to go through the underpass. Jeff stops the car, but Finch presses down on the gas pedal. He tries to tell him that the RV is higher than the underpass, but it's too late, their solar panels get destroyed. Jeff gets out and pushes the RV in with his super strength. The car pulls up, stops briefly, and then drives away. Finch goes outside and finds that all their solar panels are destroyed, blaming himself for his error in judgment, they are not going to make it, he's desperate, old and tired, but Jeff will not let him give up, Finch yells for him to shut up. Jeff stands there confused as it starts to rain, unsure of how to remedy the situation. After some creeping around, Jeff comes inside, sits down and tells Finch that he thinks they'll make it to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and the reason is because he believes in him. Finch tells Jeff a story about why he doesn't trust people and how he found Goodyear in a backpack, so frightened and so alone that he decided to protect him at all costs. 
Hunger makes people killers, but it made Finch a coward. He asks him how can you believe in someone like that? Still 480 miles to San Francisco, Jeff drives all the while Finch rests. Jeff turns the postcard over and finds that the postcard is from Finch's dad. He checks the other postcards and suddenly a butterfly flies against his windshield. He pulls over, wakes Finch up and points at the butterfly, Finch stretches out his hand and the sunlight does not burn him. He gets out and feels the sunlight, the UV radiation has dropped enough that it's not a danger. On the road he notices a flower and another butterfly and laughs with joy. They drive on and see flowering planes. Finch gets dressed and they decide to picnic outside in the daylight, something he has not done in a decade. Jeff tells him that he saw a picture in his head of the three of them on the Golden Gate Bridge that he's never seen before with his eyes. It's called a dream. Jeff points out that the postcard is signed by Finch's father and it's time for another story. Finch's father left him and his mother before he was born. His father traveled the world and on his 15th birthday, this postcard appeared out of the blue. He treasured it and when he was old enough, he bought this suit to impress him, but he never heard from him again. He tells him more about the human contradictions, that he himself has never been on the bridge and wishes he had made more of the time he had. Jeff gets up and tells him to leave right now, They'll be at the bridge in 18 hours, Finch points out that he won't make it. Jeff promises to take care of Goodyear when he's gone. Finch takes Goodyear's ball and they play fetch. He gives Jeff the ball and teaches him that this is one of the steps to building trust with the dog. When Jeff walks around with the ball in his hand and Goodyear follows him, Finch quietly tells him to just throw the ball. Jeff does and is happy. Goodyear brings the ball to him, but he gives it back to Jeff. They repeat this until Finch is coughing up blood and Jeff helps him to the RV. When he asks if he can do something to help him, Finch says he already has, shakes his hand, and they hug, Jeff being visibly saddened by his helplessness in this situation. Finch goes inside and lies down. While Jeff packs up their things, Goodyear comforts Finch. Finch pats his head, and takes his last breath. Jeff and Goodyear have him cremated in the plains. After they mourn Finch's death, he feeds the dog and they play catch. Jeff realizes that it is his job to take care of Goodyear from now on, and they set off again. He befriends Goodyear, who eventually accepts him. When they finally arrive at the Golden Gate Bridge, Jeff makes a memorial sign for Finch. On the fence, people have stuck messages to loved ones letting them know where to find them. This suggests that there are more survivors, dozens, maybe even hundreds of loved ones have the opportunity to be reunited. The world is not doomed. There are still places that are safe and recovering from the solar flare. A bittersweet ending. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.